Uh, when it comes to the Black Rights Movement, many people think of big characters like Rosa Parks and uh, Martin Luther King. And they also think of the famous speech, I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King. Today I'm going to tell you about a speech uh, called The Ballot or the Bullet, given by another famous uh, speaker on black rights, who was by the name of uh, Malcolm X. The speech kind of shows his anger towards how the black community has been treated and what the black community needs to do to fix it. Uh, first up, some background. Uh, Malcolm had been dealing with racism at a very young age. When he was really, really young, his house was burned down by the KKK. And the firefighters came, but just to watch a bonfire. They had no interest in helping a black family. So him and his family moved and built a new house in a different state, where uh, later on they were harassed again, and his dad was found tied up dead on the train tracks by the KKK. So he grew up with a hatred for white people. He moved to the city. Uh, he became a pimp, and uh, he got arrested for petty crimes, and he spent six years in jail. And while in jail, he started reading a lot. He read about Muslim faith, Muslim faith and uh, politics, and he became a black rights activist once he got out of jail. And he also joined a Muslim uh, ministry. Um, where was the speech given? He gave it twice. First was in the Cory Methodist Church on April 3rd, uh, 1964, Clinton, Ohio. The second was in a King Solomon Church, Detroit, Michigan, April 12th, 1964. Um, the significance. Um, it was a one-hour speech, so he went over a lot of things. The first point of significance was voting power and understanding politics. So he basically started off that the black community has been being de like deceived by white politicians for so long. Uh, at the time, it was mainly Democrats who would like, promise things to the black community, but they would never actually pass anything to help them out. And basically, he went on saying that the people, the community needs to understand politics more, and they need to use their vote like right so they can actually get their rights with quote unquote saying, until we become politically mature, we will continually uh, be misled. And that still happens today, you know, a lot, a lot. There's a lot of people who aren't like, you know, polit politically mature and they end up wasting their vote. Our next up is improving community with black business. At this time, the white man owned everything. They owned their stores, their diners, their banks and everything. And these were places that black people couldn't be treated equally. So basically his point was that they need to build black business within their community because, you know, at a black diner, a black man can sit wherever he wants and he can eat whatever he wants. He basically said the only way to improve their community is by building it up themselves instead of waiting for the white man to do it for them. And then the last point of significance was uh, in the title, the ballot or bullet. The bullet uh, stands for violence and the ballot stands for freedom. Malcolm unlike uh, Martin Luther King, was he believed in using force and violence if it was necessary. Uh, he mentioned that in his speech quite a few times, and he repeated the ballot or bullet a lot. He didn't, uh, basically he said that it's time to stop singing and start swinging, and that was a reference to like the marches down the street and stuff. And he also gave his opinion on sitting, saying that anyone, a coward, a bum, can do a sitting, but you know, you need to be courageous and fight for your rights. I'm gonna play a clip here. And you walking around here singing, we shall overcome the government has failed. This is part of what's wrong with you. You do too much singing. saying that you gotta use some force. Um, next is rhetorical devices. First up is a metaphor. I'm not going to sit at your table and watch you eat with nothing on my plate and call myself a diner. Uh, 
It's pretty easy to understand. Basically, you just can't call yourself something you're not. You can't say you're an activist and fighting for black rights if you're not actually fighting for black rights. Next up is in another metaphor. Uncle Sam's hands are dripping in blood. It's basically, he's trying to anger the people with this. He's saying that America isn't innocent. They've caused death for black people. They've caused a lot of misfortune. And yeah. Uh, next up is an anaphora. It says, why should white people be running all the stores in our community? Why should white people be running the banks of our community? Why should the economy of our community be in the hands of white men? This goes back to the uh, black business and stuff, that they need to build up their community, get some black business in their community. Uh, next up is ethos, pathos, and logos. Uh, with ethos, he starts his whole speech off with ethos. It's a couple paragraphs. Basically, he's talking about his background. He says his experience with racism. He says that he's a Muslim. Uh, he talks about how he's a minister and how he's an activist of black rights. And he compares himself to people like MLK, who is a Christian minister and an active uh, for black rights. Next is pathos. He mainly uses anger in his speech to get to people. He tries to anger them about how they've been treated and the misfortune they've gone through. <coughs> like the metaphor I showed you before. Uh, next up is logos. He uses some statistics. This is going back to the deceiving part. He explained how, so like I said, it was the Democrats at this time that gave a lot of promises. He explained how at the time the Senate was mainly Democratic and the House of Reps was two-thirds Democratic which means they could have passed some laws to help the black community, but they never did because all they wanted was the black votes. Um, why is this speech endure? Um, racism is still a thing today. Uh, there's racist people, there's things like police brutality. We saw a lot of protests about this kind of stuff back in 2020 with George Floyd. And I just don't think the speech will really lose any relevance until racism and stuff like that has gone away. And also the controversy between peaceful and violent protests. Some people say that peaceful doesn't get the point across. Some say violence gives us a bad image. Uh, yeah, that's my speech. Thanks for listening.